Welcome to our review on atomic structure. So the first thing we really need to understand then are three definitions that hopefully we remember from lower down the school. So the first one we've got there is the term element. Now when we're referring to an element, what we're talking about is something that's made up of only one type of atom. So gold, for example, is an element because it's only made up of gold atoms. Second word there, compound, is where we've got two or more elements that are chemically bonded together. And the last one on there, the periodic table, is that table that contains all of the elements that have been discovered to date. What we find then is that absolutely everything, and that includes all of the elements, are made of these things called atoms. Now, our atoms themselves are made up of three subatomic particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. And if we look at the diagram at the bottom there, we can see how they're actually arranged. So in the center, what we have is a structure called the nucleus, and that is made up of our neutrons and the protons. And around the outside of that, we've got these little shells or layers, and they contain our electrons. We do need to know a little bit more about those three subatomic particles then. And the two things that we must remember about it are the relative charge for each and the relative mass for each. So if we look at our proton first of all, easy way to remember the charge there is that it begins with a P and the charge is positive. So it's a plus one. So the P for positive and the P for proton. And it has a mass of one. Our neutron, just think the word neutral there for the charge. So neutrons have no charge, and they've got a mass of one as well. And then finally, our electrons, these have a charge of minus one, and their mass is very small, okay? It's 0 0.0005. So what we actually find then is if we think about the structure of our atom, in our nucleus, we've got our protons and our neutrons, which means that the nucleus itself has a positive charge, and it also is where we have the mass because if we look at the two values there for our proton and neutron, they both have a relative mass of one compared to the electrons 0.0005. So the majority of the mass of our atom is in the nucleus, which has a positive charge on it. But do remember that when we're talking about atoms, the total charge of the atom is neutral. When it comes to the actual discovery about the atoms and their structure, there are four scientists that we need to remember. So we've got John Dalton, who was the guy that actually suggested that everything was made of atoms and that they can't be made or destroyed. Then we had a guy called Thompson, and he discovered that the elements contain the subatomic particles called electrons. Rutherford then discovered that the atom is mainly empty space and that those electrons were arranged around the nucleus, which is in the center. And finally, Bohr actually worked out that those electrons move in orbits or shells around the nucleus. So do remember those four scientists in order, Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford and Bohr, and a quite simple version of what they actually discovered as well. Two more definitions that we need to know then. If we look at our periodic table, there are four bits of information that we get in each of those little boxes. We get the chemical symbol, we get the chemical name, and then two numbers. The smaller of the two numbers in the box is the atomic number, and the larger of the two is the atomic mass. So when we're talking about the atomic number, what we're actually referring to there is the number of protons or the number of electrons that that particular atom has inside it. If we think about the mass number, however, that is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The last key word that we need to understand the meaning of for this session is the word isotope. Now, what we actually find is that when we're looking at elements, there are a few different varieties of them. And what we find is that that particular element will have different varieties. They've got the same atomic number but different mass numbers. And the reason for that is that we see the number of neutrons changing. The protons and electrons stay the same, but they will have different numbers of neutrons in those different isotopes.